part two, 2nd of September, 2024. We got cut off because I showed you Charlie nibbling on my arm. Damn it. But anyway, here we are, back in the room, carrying on rather intrepidly. And we're still in um, September, 2nd of September, 2021. I shared a quote by Adam Shafto, no idea who he is, judging by the outfit he's got on, some kind of actor, no idea who he is, but it was reposted by a Will Wheaton, no idea who he is either, I have heard of, of him lately though, in the last few days, so there you go, synchronicity. So, says Adam Shafto, I've been writing reviews for about 10 years. My wife's review of Alien puts everything I have ever written to shame. Alien is a movie where nobody listens to the smart woman and then they all die except for the smart woman and her cat. Four stars. Pretty much sums it up succinctly. Here I shared a meme. Keep calm because Halloween is coming soon. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And I write, yay, except it's actually Beltane in this hemisphere. <laughs> but never mind, I still act as if um, I still align with the northern hemisphere and I still put on a, I'd still decorate for Halloween and have lollies and all the children come and trips up the stairs and they they love it they really do 2nd of september 2020 11 11 a.m another beautiful day graced by the gods thank you holy one for life for love for peace <laughs> excuse me for joy in all manifestations Second of September two thousand and eighteen. We had Father's Day yesterday. Was it yesterday? Sunday, I think it was. Anyway, I didn't really acknowledge it. But here I wrote quite a bit about Father's Day, which trigger warning it'll be fucking depressing if I mention my own fathers, but never mind. Happy Father's Day to all the wonderful fathers who are doing a great job out there and and managing not to damage their children, which is a hard thing to do, no matter how excellent a father you are. Especially happy Father's Day to all the men who aren't sexually predating on their kids. More power to you for being a decent human being. But anyway, that's my issues, and um, I own them, and I ride through them on a daily basis, babies. But anyway, here I wrote back in 2018, Happy Father's Day to all the men in the world worthy of that title. I had one father, two stepfathers, one godfather, four men in my immediate family throughout my childhood. Actually five because from the age of, you know, three or four, I had a, a much older brother-in-law as well. Not one was a man capable of safe, kind parenting of me. My only father figures who treated me with kindness and respect were my grandfather, whom I saw occasionally during my early childhood when he visited on his trips from Auckland. My neighbour, Mr Ewan Robertson, who was quirky and bright and witty, but alas, like many fathers, had his own issues. But what I meant by that was, ironically, even though he had a problem with being an alcoholic, he was actually never sexually inappropriate around me. I was completely safe in their household. And um, as a young child, <laughs> that was worth its weight in gold to be safe in a household with a male in it. <clears throat> Here I write... Yet I seemed able to find safety with his wife and daughter in their home, an oasis on a wind-tossed beachfront. 
My place of childhood domicile was full of violence and sexual predation and fear and, yes, loathing. So having my safe houses with people who loved and accepted me for whom I was, was the difference between life and death. Instead of confrontation and devaluing, I was nourished and cosseted and in many small ways defended and protected. Those small gestures built into beacons of hope and courage for a world I had yet to grow into. My other father figure was another neighbour down the street, Mr Theo Hodemakers, a quiet, hard-working Dutchman, a boatmaker. I loved him too until he formed some kind of alliance with my mad cunt of a father, so then I held back with circumspection. But Theo was a good man, I believe, as much as any man in my childhood. He was safe. Safe meant he was not sexually predating on me, was good-humoured, teased me with a twinkle of mischief in his eye and a dry sardonic wit, housed me for six months when Case and my mother went to America and Holland when I was 14. My nearest and dearest father, my role model, my protector, has never married or fathered children of his own. He has been a constant in my life, never swayed in his loyalty to me. And oh my God, how he was pushed to the limits by my disgusting, manipulative mother. But a real father is a man who is there for you, no matter what. Solid, staunch, courageous, loves you even as he has to watch you break your own heart a million times in a myriad ways, even as you break his. I adore you, my friend, my Jared. We did not have easy, safe childhoods, but we grew to be wonderful, loving, strong and beautiful people sulking to each other in a mad, damaged, fractured, berserker world. You are my rock. Yes, you are, Jared Nielsen. She, with too many fathers of the wrong kind, salutes you. I thank God for you. I raise a glass or a bloodied, weary warrior goddess I up to all the good men in the world. You're out there. You exist. I've seen some of you. You're out there. Don't despair. Don't think that I hate all men or I think you're all evil and befouled because I've seen you married to other people or, you know... My, my handsome, talented psychiatrist, my friend Jared, men in the club who've treated me with kindness and decency. I see you, here I write, I see you, in all your perfect imperfections. Men who love their women and their children in decent, kind, honourable, safe, supportive, nurturing ways. <clears throat> You are so, so much appreciated and so loved by me. One who knows what it is like to be unmothered and unfathered and had to find a new tribe to match her vibe because the gods were crazy and cast her down into a nest of hellions but brought her up to see greatness in the futile, the fragile, and the humble. A miracle. <clears throat> Comment on a meme. Ha ha, but seriously. My ex-husband had crippling back pain every time I had a baby. Fortunately, I only had two, am I right? 
So his GP, a white, older, conservative man, recommended a tiny, four-foot-tall Vietnamese woman acupuncturist. She made home visits, took one look at me with my newly post-delivery birth body, one look at my husband, took me aside and hissed at me. He useless man, no good, no good. You too good for this useless man. Don't worry, I fix him. She goes into our bedroom, lights joysticks and literally walked more like stomped on his back. He moaned and whined with the pain. I'm sure it was quite an experience. She had needles all over him. After one session, he could get out of bed to walk to the toilet, back at work after three sessions. Luan, Luan was a fucking amazing miracle worker. Even my ex was converted to acupuncture. She was wonderful. She spoke fluent French and although Vietnamese had trained in France for years. Oh, what fun we had. Useless, she would utter. Useless. Look at him. Why you marry that big meathead? I tell you, she healed more than Michael's bad back that way. I wish I still knew her. She literally saved my life. She was in her early 40s at that time and I was what? I just had my first baby, so 20 and a half. She was a real mother to me. One look. Oh, she did give him one look and she knew he was a meathead. What are you doing with this useless man who should be nurturing and caring for you since you're the one that just gave him a baby? She was right. She's the only one to say that, by the way. Everyone else told me that I was some kind of misfit or lazy or acopic or useless. Gaslit by the entire family on both sides. It was evil what they did to me. So that wonderful Vietnamese woman, healer, acupuncturist. She'd never had children or been married herself. And I think she was worried, genuinely worried about me. She could see it was an impossible fucking situation. But what did I do? I gave him another child. Mind you, to be fair, Jasmine, Jasmine, was a surprise package and was not quite planned for and was quite unexpected, but I fought to keep her too. So I gave him both his children and I stayed in that marriage for 10 and a half years, which is 10 more years than I should have stayed after he hit me six months into the marriage. Fortunately, he only ever dared fucking hit me once because I told him, if he ever laid a hand on me again, he'd be lying in his own bed, drenched in his own blood. He knew I meant it too. But no, what did I do? Stayed with that monster who did nothing but. He didn't hit me ever again, but he undermined me at every turn, badmouthed me to all my friends and all my family members, all his friends, all his family members. And when we bought our business here in Kapala Bar, 1989, bad-mouthed me to all my staff and customers. He was a constant traitor and a thorn in my side. Which is why I'm no longer married to it anymore. Luan was right. He was indeed a meathead and a useless man. Completely. Later I wrote... So my immediate plans for a lovely afternoon just went down in blazing glory, stomach racked with pain and discomfort. Too much dancing on Friday night, so my body is punishing me. 
My doctor thinks exercise is good for me. She has no fucking idea what doing so does to me for several days after. But I'm trying to heal my body, even with the constant scouring. I hope this is not another impending gallstone attack, as frankly, I'm not in the mood to live in agony today or any fine day such as this. I need to walk my dog, but will have to let my tummy settle, then head to the shops to buy food, then rest, I guess. Interestingly, this weekend, it's now Monday, I was pretty fucking wrecked on Saturday and I was a bit wrecked yesterday, but I feel I feel reasonably okay today. But last week, it took me until Thursday to recover. And then I went dancing again on Friday. Just just keep going, just keep going, babies. But yeah, um, so I don't feel quite as exhausted this, this last few days. I wonder why I was more hammered last weekend. Because I danced just as vigorously. I danced just as vigorously as I did last weekend. I guess it just depends on my body in any given week how I how I react to things. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> twelve forty five p.m. I have finally showered, washed my hair, and shaved my legs. Scrubbed clean of old filth and negative vibes. The afternoon is mine to jive with my tribe. Happiness, holiness, purity regained. Hearts unrestrained. Heads clear. Dog eagerly awaiting a walk. On we go. 2nd of September 2017. Beautiful day, had a long sleep, just took Charlie and the bow for a long walk around the forest. No wild nectar trees in flower, as I was hoping to give some to Charlie. So when I got home, I picked a macadamia flower brat and he seemed happy with that. My little darling, aren't you my darling baby girl? Yes, you are. It's nearly sleepy by time for Charlie, though. The sun's just setting, Charlie. One of the neighbours who takes his toddler for a walk stopped at my front gate to say hello. Very kind man. His little fella turns two tomorrow. Very cute. There are some nice people in the hood. I must focus on that. What's today, Monday? Hmm. Someone is happy to have the mama home with him, snuggling on the couch. Think I will stay home and keep warm tonight. Picking up vibes from Nikki, who lives behind me, who often brings me beautiful bread. That's not what I'm wanting. It's not the bread I'm focusing on, but I'm picking up her vibes and I'm thinking maybe I should go around there and say good day. But it's late. It's dinner time. People are cooking and be inappropriate to go around there now. Just wondering why I'm picking up on her vibes. Guess I'll have to go with that. You pick up what you pick up on, and sometimes it's not even the exact person. So it's why I don't usually worry too much about it watching acknowledgement fascinating it's a documentary about extraterrestrials here's some more zany photos of mama t with the bow <laughs> oh dear goddess I mean you kind of have to laugh he was such a good doggy though 5.29pm sunset update I posted a photo and 
the same time, exact same time, we're having the sunset out there. Amazing. Amazing synchronicity. Except the time here now is 6.01 p.m. 33 degrees outside by the gods. That's hot for 6.03 p.m. I mean 6.01 p.m. Response to a video and or meme. The Spice Girls kitties reminded me of Crystal, Jasmine, Ashley and Jamie. All making videos of Spice Girls songs. They had the best time and is such a happy memory of the kids. Dancing around my living room in our home there at Waterford West. Dancing, having all the moves to all the Spice Girls songs. Oh, they loved that. Here I shared a meme. Stop setting yourself on fire for people who will sit there and <laughs> watch you burn. And I wrote, oh my God, yes. Just stop burning for people who sit back and watch you burn like you are a fucking radiant teeter. It's really nasty to do that to light you up and then watch you fry while they go on to fuck up someone else's day, am I right? Oh well, it is what it is. 2nd of September 2016. I had a happy day today, very anxious and or emotional, but happy. Valium is such a gift, smiley face. And then I'm responding to my friend T who told me that I shouldn't be taking it. But this was my response. I rarely take it, but my anxiety was through the roof. Sometimes it is just kinder to settle my nerves. For my sake and for those around me, there were some very amazing intense shifts in my psyche last week. One was caused by fighting yet again with the Commonwealth Bank, who actually were sorry, but still in a backhanded way. They gave me money to quote unquote make me happy, unheard of, like giving an ice cream to a little girl, then telling her to play in the middle of the road. I was rather furious. The sum of money does not reinstate my much needed overdraft or really offset the trauma I experienced being humiliated at the Carindale branch. But it was good will accompanied by a dozen verbal sorries. So fuck it. Then I reconnected, pardon me, with an old friend and spent some pleasant time in each other's company. Nothing romantic or sexual, but surprising all the same, so my emotions were extremely heightened. If you can't sleep for nights on end, one Valium would calm your nervous system enough to settle you down for the next night, long half-life, but it is for anxiety, not a sleep aid. Anyway, as you all know, if you've been reading my status updates, I am off my regular psych meds. Three months today. It has been hardest getting free of them, but I have done well. I don't think one Valium in three months when needed to prevent hyper-emotionalism is bad. It's not like I ever take them, except for my suicide attempt, which was... Interesting. Update 2022. Gosh, I can't remember who that old friend even was. Must have been a blowout and I got excited about nothing, as per usual, laughing out loud. Six years, three months free of psych meds, including Valium. But today, I could have done with some cannabis after all the high strangeness. Never mind, pristine loins, clear head, mind 
recalibrated, it's for the birds laughing out loud. So, um, yeah, it's eight years and three months free of psych meds now. I'm doing well. I've had to resort to Valium. Oh, um, when did I need to resort to Valium? Just after the um, sleep study, I had a breakdown over the sleep study. Nothing to do with the sleep study itself, just the mere thought of having to um, go back on CPAP and the fear that it wouldn't work because it didn't work in 2003. And I've been on it now for eight weeks, just over eight weeks, and it's still not really working, but I've got to persevere. I've got to give it six to 12 months. And... Um, the fear of what happens if it doesn't work yet again because there's no other treatment. Um, well, there's, there's, a, there's another treatment for my bladder, which would be um, getting Botox squirted into my bladder, 12, 12 injections of that every six to nine months. I'm not wanting that. So I'm running out of fucking options here. So that, you know, anyway, I had a breakdown over it all, just absolute terror of what happens if it fails and what happens if it succeeds and you know my mind did a little whirly gig and spin out and then I needed my Valium but the funny thing was I rang my psych and I said I'm having a major breakdown Brian it's not good it's not like me to be like this I've been very very good he's like take some Valium now so I go to get my Valium out of my where I keep my you know my medicines and um it had expired in 2018 that's how long since I've had to take any. So I was like, back on the phone, what do I do? It's expired. He was like, just take one anyway, Tanya. It won't, it won't do you any harm. And yeah, I did, and I calmed right down. But I did, goddess. So, um, which reminds me, I probably should get a script for some fresh failure. <laughs> but honestly, I don't take it very often. I have to be in full breakdown mode before I turn to that. I usually try mindfulness, breathing exercises, going for a walk, you know, dancing in my house, calling a friend. There's all, I've got all sorts of, you know, modalities that I run through and if none of them work, then I need the Valium. But anyway, it is what it is, people of Earth. 2nd of September, 2015. Beautiful Byron Bay sunset. It is indeed beautiful. Oh, I love Byron Bay. I love it so much. One fifty two AM home safe. Bear in mind it takes two hours to get drive there and two hours to drive back so nearly two in the morning I must have left around just before midnight anyway I had a lovely afternoon and evening I left when the open mic finished at midnight oh there you go some really good talent um, I was at an open mic thing at Brunswick Heads Hotel it was lovely had a wonderful time I even joined in the dancing for the last few performers. It's hard to believe how shy I still am when breaking in new venues. You wouldn't believe it, would you? I walk in like our own places, like I walked into the Koala Tavern, full blazing glory. I walked into Fitzy's, full blazing glory. You know, of course I walk in with great confidence and, you know, with the Brooklyn Standard because I know I'm loved and welcome there. But take me to a new venue and I kind of, it's very difficult. It's very difficult for me. I'm on my last nerve and I have to fight through it to um, relax and get into my zone and get into my dance. The band who backed up all the talent were friendly and welcoming. One young girl who was stonkering drunk danced with me and afterwards told me I am awesome, laughing my ass off. Oh, that's sweet, isn't it? I am glad I went in spite of the anxiety attack I had earlier over losing my script. 
I am nothing if not intrepid. The beach was so healing and beautiful. I will try to visit more often in the warmer months. Hmm, probably should do that again, but I'm reluctant to drive so far when I'm constantly feeling dizzy and woozy. It's not safe to go on long day trips like that on my own, feeling weak and dizzy and vulnerable. I mean, I could have a fucking accident for the love of all the gods. So I kind of need someone to come with me. Do I not? But of course, most of my friends don't come with me anymore. Oh, well, it's a tragedy in four acts. I guess the other way around it was as I could take a bus down and then I wouldn't have to worry about driving. But then I'd be limited to where, you know, where I can go because I don't have my own car. So there is that. Well, anyway, the warmer months have already begun early, so we're there, babies. Byron Bay or bust. 2nd of September 2014, 12.48am, still have a headache. I don't usually suffer headaches for two days in a row. Odd. Busy afternoon. I got up at 3.33pm and hit the ground running, dressed and drove to Kapalaba Produce to buy laying mash for my girls, decided to buy a wormer as well, then drove to fill up on petrol as it was cheap, then went to City Pets to buy a two litre chook waterer as warmer weather is coming and the cat bowls won't be enough for my preciouses. Then I visited Lynn and we bartered my eggs for her horse poo which I need for my compost pile. Then we had a lovely cup of tea and a chat. Then Crystal rang that she was coming to see me, so I went home to meet her. Geeta and Zani not here tonight, which is very weird. I heard them whispering during the day, so I guess they went out. Weirdest fucking borders ever. It's not the child, but the mother was, she wasn't right, that woman. It was something not. Something really fucking sus about her. But anyway. Crystal and I had yummy yatala pies for dinner and I went out to mix water and sorry, to mix the wormer and water and put it in the chook pens. Now I can chillax, although with the wild winds I want to go out, smiley face. Of course I do. Wild weather and full moons and storms. Make me want to go out, babies. 2nd of September 2013. Here's a very handsome boy, much loved by his grandmother. Ramon, the rare Queensland rabbit. Why have we got a photo of a frying pan with eggs on it? Don't know. Must have been eggs I'd given Crystal. She was photo. Took a photo of them, maybe. No, I know why. There's two yolks, but only one eggshell. It's a double yoker. I probably wanted to record that. 2nd of September 2012. My friend Margaret Jakovat, who I met in Melbourne when I was nine years old, when we first migrated here to Australia to um, live with Case, my mother's then boyfriend. Maybe you need some of this stuff to ward off future evil. I found it in the bathroom with one of my rellos in Croatia. It didn't seem to work on me though. I keep visiting that country of my ancestors. Anyway, it's basically a sun cream, but the name is a screen. <laughs> she knows how I feel about my family of origin. Family repellent. <laughs> Hilarious. You pulling out feathers, Charlie? Look, she's pulled out another one. Naughty birdie. Naughty nurse. 
No pulling out feathers. No, Charlie. 2nd of September, 2010. My, anemone, my anemones I got for free when I purchased my weeping rose are all in bloom. Such happy, smiling faces. They are performing better than some of the very expensive bulbs I actually paid money for, lol. Proof that the best things in life are free. And my friend Sylvia, Sylvia Shine, who I referred to as Auntie Sylvia, wrote, And how? Then I wrote, Breathe in, breathe out, repeat. It's that easy. Whatever. I am majorly addicted to breathing like every other organic being on earth. I had a really chesty, bad coffee day. But the good news is Housing Commission gave me a brand spanking new stove oven. I am thrilled to bits. Now there's no excuse for not cooking. I will make chatsi lim for crystal as I can grill eggplant now. Chatsi lim's like an Israeli dish of um, eggplant with tomato puree and you layer it and it's really yummy. Tastes a bit like I guess like moussaka. <clears throat> Update. 2nd of September 2020. Ten years later, the stovetop still doesn't work properly. I had it repaired by housing contractors three times last year. It worked until they walked out the door. I was literally gaslit. I've only been able to cook on two elements I will have to ask them to fix it again and um, yeah they, they replaced it I think because this one I've got it's been working fine but then I don't cook as much in it as I used to I just um, mainly cook in my air fryer these days or boil on top I very rarely do roasts or cakes um, so I'm hoping my oven is still working but anyway Thus concludes today's um, meanderings, musings, offerings, writings, processings. Um, well, there wasn't any channeling today per se, but anyway, this concludes today's memories of even date. It, um, the time is currently 6.18 p.m. So wherever you are in the space-time continuum, Enjoy life, enjoy your very best that life has to offer you according to thy means and um, your situation. And as always, choose life, choose to be happy. Sometimes you have to fake it till you make it, but not too much because you saw the photo early, of, early on of all those actors and mus mus musicians who... Um, faked it till they made it and then got off the bus gus so don't fake that too much know when you're in trouble and you need support therapy or um you know some other kind of intervention i'm not fond of antidepressants because they don't work for me but if you need them babies you need them and just to get you through temporarily at least i was on them for far too long and they didn't do shit for me but you know that too was a choice that I willingly participated, falsely thinking that it would heal my mind, body and spirit. The only thing that healed my mind, body and spirit was getting myself free of the evil family of origin. And unfortunately, I had to wait for them to die to get truly free of them. And then I got viciously attacked with that will dispute for another two and a half years. So... It, it was a it was a long long grinding slowly grinding healing and becoming but i mean here we are now um 14 years after my mother's death or 14 years and six months after my mother's death and um you know 12 years after the will dispute ended and i'm finally i finally reached a point where i'm um feeling pretty good about life in general.
all, all, all things being weighed up and by the um, by the scales of justice and life and you know the gods and um, even even considering beginning beginning a, a loving partnership you know hopefully in the next I don't know year or two when I recalibrate from my um, CPAP and have more energy and motivation and when and if the right man who wants to be with me comes along, am I right? Because you can't, can't, um, you can't manifest that all by your little self. It takes two to tango babies. But anyway, um, having said that, I'm not focusing too much on that. I've made a decision that I need to, um, yeah, yeah, uh, get my health back into some sort of equilibrium and I'm thinking maybe the B12 might might help me. I haven't noticed any difference today, but it was only administered at midday. So there was that. And um, yeah, the CPAP, the CPAP's gonna be, you know, um, it's gonna be a bit of a journey. So July, August, September, two months. It's been two months, so. I'm frustrated because I've just I've just been in a holding pattern for decades really and I'm frustrated about that too but you know my GP um, told me that uh, my bloods were actually quite good and I'm actually quite healthy apart from my respiratory issues and you know my CPTSD issues I'm actually quite healthy I was astonished to hear that actually I was put off going to be honest because I was expecting I was expecting to you know be told I'm diabetic or some other fucking shit show had come taking control over my body but no um, and it just shows you the power of mind over matter and being determined and living your best life and dancing your dance every weekend keeping myself you know quite fit quite fit and energized and motivated and um yeah life is beautiful be in it my beloved ones never ever let the bastards grind you down and continue to live your very best life as um as much as you possibly can and um love the ones who love you back <coughs> to all my my gorgeous friends and uh, remnant family out there in the void and uh, you know to my doctors who kick, have kicked me along this long even when sometimes I upped up about it and didn't want to be kicking along they uh, they fought hard for me that too was um, that too was astonishing given um, how stubborn and recalcitrant I can be at times I mean, I kind of have to laugh. But anyway, God and Goddess bless you all. And I'm grateful for you all being in my life. And I'm grateful to the Holy One and all manifestations, the gods, the angels, the archangels, the Fae, and uh, the ancestors that love me. The rest can just laugh the fuck off, you know. don't want them in my energy, but... There are ancient, ancient ancestors that I know love me because at too many 11th hours when all was lost and I had uh, turned my face to the wall and prepared to leave this planet, I was rescued not once but many times. So uh, I know, I know not to question my angels and my ancestors, not to have doubts or fears and just you know trust them that they know what's best for me in the in the, in the long run although at times my um my mortal self you know arced up because it was just too terrifying to think of a life where I'll never be loved and I'll never have peace and I'll never have safety and it was too too much of a seductive seductive lure 
to want to, you know, escape that that shit show and that horror, which were not imaginary but very, very real, by the way. So, <clears throat> with the help of my gods and my angels and my soulful, beautiful, true friends and doctors, I'm here and you're here and we're all here together holding each other up our small corners of the planet sometimes it's a hellscape other times it's a paradise it's what we all choose to make of it and um yeah there will be miracles when you believe babies so bye for now i'll be back tomorrow no no doubt with more readings of Diary, journal entries and um yeah that process is nearly finished i think we've got only september and halfway through october to go and then what will i do what will i be doing i'll maybe have to find some other stories to tell you or write some more stories um i'm thinking about reverting back to i started to do it intermittently reading from um literature and poet poet you know other other literature other poets and authors because i really enjoy reading those out to you so we could be doing that um don't know if it's something that you're interested in but i guess we'll find out over time won't we and um yeah ah uh, let us all make the most wonderful story for our existence here on planet earth let it be about love and passion and romance and joy and sweetness and kindness and solidarity and protection, you know, not aligning with malfeasant global fucking gimps, but protection where when you can see something's not good for our human species, we have each other's back, backs and the courage to say no. And uh, that kind of protection, courageous, honouring, fierce, determined, upholding each other's body autonomy and spirit and heart and mind, protecting us all. The gods are watching us on a daily basis and a nightly basis. I've actually been feeling all day all day I've had this powerful sensation of I just kept feeling something really really powerful but wonderful and positive and awesome is about to happen and I'm thinking I have no idea what whether it's in my own personal life or if it's you know affecting the collective I have no idea but I've, I've had this feeling of such mmm even though I've been very tired today, I've had this feeling of such um, anticipatory kind of excitement, like you're just standing on the brink of some kind of breakthrough and you, you're so close you can taste it, that kind of sense. So um, I'm going to go with that. Something wonderful is happening right now in the eternal now. And... Uh, However that wonderful thing is, that beautiful, powerful, gorgeous thing is, I hope you are, you know, able to enjoy it in the most profound and beautiful ways with your family and your friends and all your community or tribe and just love each other so powerfully and beautifully because that is the greatest gift of all. Love is the law love under will bye for now beautiful ones my beautiful fellow humans on planet earth and all other interdimensional entities gifted to us on this planet let there be peace in all worlds and all paradigms across the multiverse bye for now